हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लास्ट टाइम वी हैव स्टार्टेड डीलिंग विद द न्यूमेरिकल पार्ट ऑफ दिस टॉपिक रेडियो एक्टिविटी इन विच वी हैव डील्ड विद द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट हाउ डज द एटॉमिक नंबर एंड मास नंबर गेट्स अफेक्टेड ड्यू टू द रेडियो एक्टिव डिस इंटीग्रेशन फ्रॉम एनी एलिमेंट सच एस वी हैव डील विद सम कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक हाउ द अल्फा डिके एंड बीटा डिके एंड अनदर वन इज गामा डिके हाउ दे अफेक्ट द एटोमिक नंबर एंड द मास नंबर ऑफ द पेरेंट न्यूक्लियर नाउ वी विल बी डीलिंग सम क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन द कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक इफ अ प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लम इज गिवन टू अस with a nuclei with atomic number z and the mass number a and the integration the radioactive integration this integration that it's going to show is first it goes with alpha decay the successive emission of beta particle occurs then and then further followed by the gamma particles now after showing this kind of disintegration it's going to be converted into a daughter nuclei that i am going to indicate by the symbol y and the atomic number and the mass number of this daughter nuclei is given as 100 and 210 respectively now in the question if they ask us about the atomic number and the mass number of the parent nuclei then this thing we can solve on the base of the on the basis of the concept that we have discussed last time now since the atomic number and the mass number of the parent nuclei is not given so now we will start solving this question from this daughter nuclei as the atomic number of this daughter nuclei is 100 and this daughter nuclei is formed by the gamma emission from a nuclei that i can indicate here by the symbol x double dash and the nuclei that will be before this that i am going to indicate by the symbol x dash to make the problem easier now if i talk about the atomic number of this nuclei x dash then uh, this then uh, due to the emission of gamma particle it's going to be converted with the nuclei with the atomic number 100 and as we know that the emission of gamma particle doesn't affect the atomic number and the mass number of a nuclei so here the atomic number of this x double dash nuclei will be 100 and the mass number will be same as the daughter nuclei has the mass number will be 210 while if i talk about the atomic number and the mass number of this nuclei that i have indicated by the symbol x dash now since this x dash nuclei by the beta decay is going to be convert in a nuclei with the atomic number 100 and as we know that whenever the emission of beta particle occurs it results in the decrease of atomic number by one unit means when we subtract the atomic number of this x dash nuclei that i have indicated by the symbol z dash when we subtract the value 1 from this this should be equals to the value that this should be equals to the atomic number of this x double dash nuclei and the value is 100 so from here we can calculate the value of x dash that is the atomic number of this nuclei and the atomic number z dash will be here 99 so that will be the atomic number of this that i am going to indicate here now if i talk about the mass number of this now if the mass number i indicate by the symbol a dash so whenever this x dash element will go for the beta particle decay it will form a different nuclei with a mass number 210 and as we know that the beta decay doesn't affect the mass number of the nuclei so here the value of a dash will be same as the value of mass number for this x double dash nuclei and the mass number will be 210 here now if i talk about the question that what thing what the thing is asked in the question then they are they were not asking about the atomic number and the mass number of these two nuclei which are formed as the intermediate in this complete radioactive disintegration in the question we were asked to solve or we were asked to find the atomic number and the mass number of the starting parent nuclei now if i find the relationship between in this between the this parent nuclei and this intermediate nuclei then this intermediate nuclei is formed due to the 
decay of or due to the emission of two alpha particles from this parent nuclei and as we know that whenever the emission of one alpha particle occurs it changes the atomic number or the resultant atomic number decreases by the value 2 so since this atomic number z due to the emission of two alpha particle there will be the decrease in four decrease by four unit uh, when it will be converted into x dash so now we can make a equation like this that the initial atomic number is z since the emission of two alpha particles is so the decrease in the atomic number will be by unit 4 and by the emission of this two alpha particle it's going to be converted into this nuclei with the atomic number 99 so this z minus 4 should be equal to the value 99 and from here we can calculate the value of this z it will be equals to 103 that is the atomic number of this parent nuclei same as if I talk about the mass number of this parent nuclei then whenever this parent nuclei will go for the emission of two alpha particles one alpha particle changes the mass number by the value 4 and since the emission of two alpha particles are so there will be the change in mass number by the unit 8 this mass number will decrease by the value 8 and as it decreases by the value 8, the final mass number, from here we can see that this final mass number will be 210. So the final value we can find that this mass number of parent nuclei will be equal to 218. So that is about the atomic number and the mass number of this parent nuclei. Now if we move for the further, if we move to further problems, then again a radioactive disintegration is provided to us. Uh, and the initial nuclei with which they have started is X with the atomic mass number A and the atomic number Z. It is going to be converted into a daughter nuclei Y and uh, this integration and this conversion occurs due to the emission of one alpha particle. This Y nuclei again goes for the emission of two beta particles and if nothing is said so we are to take this that this is beta minus one particle and by the emission uh, like this it's going to be converted into final daughter nuclei that is z now uh, on the basis of this disintegration we are provided with some statements and the very first statement is in this they are showing the relationship between x and y and the statement is Now we have provided some statements based on this radioactive disintegration and we are to find the correct statement out of these. Now to solve this kind of statement if we start with the very first. So in the very first statement they are saying that the element x and the y these are isodiffers in nature. Basically before we to go to solve this question first of all we are to deal with the definition of isodiffers and isodiffers are basically defined as those nuclei which have the same difference of neutrons and protons means if i am having two nuclei with the same value of neutron minus proton then those nuclei which have same value of neutron minus proton then these nuclei are termed as isodiffers so if we are to find that whether this, this x and y are isodiffers or not, so the very first thing we are to calculate the number of neutrons and protons for these two and then further we can relate that whether the given value is same or not. So now we will solve this question and to solve this question we will be calculating the protons, neutrons and the atomic number, mass number for these nuclei. The very first nuclei was x. It was going to be converted into Y and the final one was Z. If I consider that the atomic number of this X nuclei is Z and the mass number is A, then whenever it will move for the alpha decay, then due to the emission of one alpha particle, the atomic number will decrease by the value 2 and the mass number will decrease by the value 4. So it will be the atomic number and mass number for this Y nuclei. Since it, this y, nucleus, y nuclei was going to emit 
two beta particles from it so now due to the emission of one beta particle as the atomic number increases by one due to the emission of two beta particles this atomic number will increase by the value two and for this nuclei z now the final atomic number will be z minus two plus two due to the emission of two beta particle and the final atomic number will be z so this is the atomic number for this z nuclei since due to the emission of beta particle the mass number remains unaffected so the mass number of this nuclei z will be equal to the mass number of this nuclei y and the mass number will be a minus 4 here if i calculate the um, number of neutrons and protons for these two so the very first here i am going to write the atomic number of these three the atomic number for the first one is z for the second one is z minus 2 and for the third one again the value is z since the atomic number i have indicated by the symbol z so the number of protons will be again z z minus 2 and z respectively if i find the mass number for these three so the mass number the first for the first one we have indicated the mass number by the symbol a for the second one it's a minus 4 and again for the third one it's a minus 4 on the basis of this mass number if we are to calculate the number of neutrons the number of neutrons are e are equals to atomic mass number minus atomic number so mass number is a here minus atomic number z this will give us the number of neutrons and here the value will be a minus 4 Uh, we are to subtract the number of protons from this so the value will be z minus z plus 2 here and to solve and on solving this we will be getting value as a minus z minus 2 this is the number of protons for this mid nuclei here the mass number is a minus 4 we are to subtract atomic number from this and the atomic number is z again so this is the number of neutrons present in this nuclei since the very first statement was asking that whether this nuclei x or y these are isodiapers or not and isodiapers are those nuclei which are having same value of neutron minus proton so now we are to calculate the value of neutron minus proton for these three for the first one the value will be a minus z the number of protons are again z so the total value will be here the neutrons minus proton the value will be a minus 2z here the number of neutrons are a minus z minus 2 and the number of protons are z minus 2 so on solving we will be having the value like this z minus 2 we are to subtract the number of protons from this so the value will be like this and uh, on solving we will be getting the value a minus 2z now if i calculate the value of neutron minus proton for this nuclei z so here the number of neutrons are a minus z minus 4 and the number of protons are z so the value of neutrons minus proton will be a minus 2z minus 4 so from here we can see that the value of neutron minus proton for this nuclei x and for this nuclei y is same and since the value is same so from here we can calculate we can conclude that the nuclei x and y are isodiapers in nature means the statement first is correct now it may be a multiple correct multiple choice question now it may be a multiple correct question so now if we Uh, try to solve the second one so in the second one they were they are they were saying that y and z these are isodiapers in nature we have calculated the value of neutron minus proton for this y and z also here the value of neutron minus proton is a minus 2z while the, here the value is a minus 2z minus 4 and this value is not similar or not same so here we can say that this y and z these are not isodiapers and this statement is false now if we move for the further statement where they were saying that y and z are isobaric let's check this y and z means about this and this they are asking the mass number of this y is a minus 4 and for the z the value is again a minus 4 means the value is same and those nuclei which have the same mass number can be termed as isobaric nuclei means this third statement is again true y and z these are isobaric in nature 
since these are formed by the beta decay so it's a multiple correct answer and uh, the options that are correct is a and c so this kind of problems are asked based on this concept and these can be solved since these are quite easier so these can be solved like this now a very important information that we can also get by this question and this question also tell us that uh, whenever the emission of beta particle occurs the resultant nuclei is isobaric to the starting parent one like here we can see that this nuclei y when it goes for the emission of beta particle it's going to be converted into z and here, here, and before this we have proved that this y and z are isobaric in nature so since due to the emission of beta particle mass number a it doesn't get affected so now we can conclude this that whenever the emission of a beta particle occurs resultant nuclei is a resultant nuclei is isobaric to the parent one and this thing we can write here in the form of a note that whenever the emission of beta particle occurs this beta decay it produces isobars now same as this beta decay was going to produce isobars same as if i talk about the alpha decay so you will be finding whenever the alpha decay will occur it will produce isodifer isodifers and this statement we can prove here again now if i talk about the nuclei starting nuclei we have indicated by the symbol x with the atomic number z and the mass number a if it goes for the alpha decay then it will be converted into a different nuclei y with the atomic number z minus 2 and the mass number will be a minus 4 the number of protons present in the first one is z while for the second one the value is z minus 2 the number of neutrons for the first one is a minus z while for the second one the value is mass number a minus 4 minus atomic number the value is z minus 2 and the total value will be z plus 2 here so now if i calculate the neutron minus proton value for these two neutrons are a minus z protons are z so the neutron minus proton value is a minus 2z while for the second one the number of neutrons are a minus z minus 2 and the number of protons are z minus 2 so on solving this we will be having the value a minus 2z and since the value is same for these two so here we can prove that whenever the alpha decay occurs it produces isodiferic nuclei same as here we can see that uh, this x nuclei when it goes for the emission of one alpha particle and two beta particle the resultant nuclei formed is z and the atomic number of this x and z is same while the mass number of this x nuclei is a and the mass number of this z nuclei is a minus 4 means this nuclei x and z has same atomic number but they have different mass number and those nuclei which have same atomic number and different mass number can be termed as isotopic nuclei so the third conclusion that we can draw from this question is successive emission of one alpha successive emission of one alpha and two beta particles results in isotopes and this thing we have proved in the previous question so this is the very first type of question that can be asked here now till the time we have dealt with those questions where the atomic number and the mass number of parent and daughter nuclei is provided where the atomic number and the mass number of any one out of parent and daughter nuclei is provided to us and with the help of this that how many alpha and beta particles are emitted in this integration we were asked to calculate the atomic number and mass number of the daughter or any one out of these two or any or any parent nuclei but in these kind of Uh, questions they were providing us the information that how many alpha or beta particles are going to be emitted sometimes the another type of questions can also be asked 
where they will be providing us the atomic number and the mass number of parent as well as the daughter nuclei and they can ask us the uh, they can ask us the question about the number of alpha and beta particles integrated or emitted in this kind of change for example if a question is asked to us with a uh, nuclei uranium and the atomic number of this uranium is given to us as 92 the mass number is also provided to us as 238 this uranium due to the radioactive disintegration is going to be converted into a different nuclei with the atomic number 82 and that is for the element lead so the symbol is pb and the mass number is given to us the value is 206 now this kind of disintegration will occur due to the emission of alpha beta or gamma particles but how many alpha beta or gamma particles are going to be integrated going to be emitted when this uranium is converted into lead this information is not provided to us and this is the question what is asked so here they are asking about the number of alpha and beta particles that are responsible for this kind of change now uh, as we know that whenever the alpha and beta particles are emitted they changes the atomic number and the mass number of the parent nuclei uh, whenever the emission of alpha particle occurs it decreases the atomic number by 2 unit and it decreases the mass number by 4 unit on the other hand whenever the emission of beta particle occurs it uh, increases the atomic number by 1 unit while it doesn't affect the mass number so here we can see that this atomic number it gets affected by the emission of alpha particle as well as by the emission of beta particles while the mass number it's affected only by the emission of alpha particle neither out of beta or gamma they affect the mass number so now by observing this that how this mass number is going to be changed we can calculate that how many alpha particles are going to be emitted as we know that whenever the change in mass number occurs by the value 4 it is due to the emission of one alpha particle so here we can we can write that if the change in mass number or this change is the decrease is 4 then this is due to the emission of one alpha particle now if we find out that how uh, that with what value this mass number is going to be changed like here we can find that this mass number is going to be changed by the value 32 the initial mass number was 238 finally it's 206 so the change in mass number delta a is 32 here so if the change would have been 4 we can conclude that the number of alpha particles that are responsible for this will be 1 but since here the mass number is going to be changed by 32 so since is 32 this is due to the emission of 8 alpha particles so the emission of 8 alpha particles are responsible for this so this is how we can calculate that how many alpha particles are emitted whenever the atomic number and the mass number of parent and daughter nuclei is provided to us so this is the second type of questions that are asked to us now we can also conclude this Uh, without setting the equation again and again and applying the unitary method we can also convert this in a form of formula that if i am to find the number of alpha particles then this number of alpha particles can be calculated by observing the change in mass number and uh, if we subtract if we divide this change in mass number by the value 4 then by this formula we can calculate that how many number of alpha particles are going to be emitted 
Now, if I talk about the second part of this question, where they were asking us that how many beta particles are going to be emitted. Now, as we know that whenever a emission of one alpha particle occurs, the change in atomic number occurs by two. And as we have calculated that here, the total number of alpha particles that are emitted are eight. So, since the emission of one alpha particle, it decreases. the atomic number by the value 2 so since the emission of 8 alpha particles are here due to the emission of 8 alpha particle the mass number should decrease by the value 16 since the initial mass number is 92 here so the final mass number z dash should be equals to 92 minus 16 and the value should have been 76 but here we can see that this value is not 76 the final mass number is 82 so it is greater as compared to 76 and if the there is the increase in mass number so this increase in mass number is possible only due to the emission of beta particle whenever the emission of one beta particle occurs it results in the increase in mass number by one unit and since here we are to increase the mass number by the value 6 the final mass number that is given to us is 82 and due to the emission of alpha particle it should be 76 and the difference between these two is 6 so here to increase the atomic number by the value 6 we are to assume that there the emission of six beta particles is going on so that is the number of beta particles and the number of beta particles that are going to be emitted in this radioactive disintegrations are 6 and uh, if we can solve this kind of questions by using this kind by using this concept but if we are to solve this so fast then we can also use a formula to calculate the beta particle that is based on this concept that we have read just now and this is number of beta particles it is equals to 2 into number of alpha particles minus change in atomic number so that is the formula that we can apply to calculate the number of beta particles and if we do not want to apply this formula we can use the simple concept that we have read before to calculate the number of alpha beta alpha and beta particles now if we apply this information on a different problem like if a question is provided to us with a starting nuclei thorium and this thorium has the atomic number 90 and the mass number is 234 it's due to the radioactive disintegration it's going to be converted into bismuth with atomic number 83 and the mass number is 210 here now if it is asked to us to calculate the number of alpha and beta particles now since the number of alpha particles will be equals to change in mass number divided by 4 and here the change in mass number is 24 it's 234 minus 210 the value is 24 divided by 4 we can calculate that here the number of alpha particles will be 6 and to calculate the number of beta particles it will be equals to 2 into number of alpha particles that is 6 minus change in atomic number the change in atomic number delta z is equals to 90 minus 83 the value is 7 so if we put this value in this formula the value will be 2 into 6 minus 7 and from here we can calculate that the number of beta particles are 5 and this 5 beta particles are responsible for this kind of interconverger so this is about the uh, today's lecture now next time we will be starting with a different law based on this radioactivity and that is called group displacement law